So sometimes when I do a read on people's romantic relationships in a reading, the other side will show me the scales of justice being tipped, which means the relationship is out of balance in some way. And that usually is in reference to a partner who is rescuing another partner, which means they're literally like reaching into the mud and trying to save them, trying to pull them out of the mud in some way, shape or form. Now, I'm going to use the context of a romantic relationship for this video, but this could be any relationship, friends, coworkers, family, you name it. But the other side at least wanted me to shed some light on some dynamics behind this type of rescuing relationship that you might not be aware of. Number one, how much are you appreciated? How much are your efforts actually appreciated? Are you weakening your partner? Are you like babying him and mommying him and totally emasculating him? He might not appreciate your rescuing at all. You think you're doing them a favor. Maybe they don't agree. So make sure your efforts are actually appreciated. Um, number two, is your compassion for your partner actually getting you into trouble? Compassion is a form of love. And it's very powerful and very noble and good for you for being empathetic and compassionate and wanting to help another human being. But I have news for you. Is your compassion working to your detriment? Are you putting up with things that you wouldn't normally put up with because you feel sorry for your partner? I want you to look at this closely because this is a big deal. And the other side takes this very seriously. I'm not saying that your partner is going to emotionally manipulate you because of this. They might not. But I'm asking you, if you didn't feel sorry for this person, would you put up with this type of treatment? Would you put up with this type of behavior? Maybe your partner, you're rescuing them, but they're also not treating you well in the process. And you put up with that treatment because you feel sorry for them. I want you to pay close attention to that. Because the other side wants a relationship that's balanced. They often show me a tennis court where the partners are hitting a ball back and forth. You have somebody to bounce new ideas off of, thoughts, feelings, whatever. They like equal partnership where you guys kind of hold each other up, right? But when the balance of power is so severe that you're just constantly like being pulled on, it's when the other side starts looking at you, the rescuer. And they're saying, what are you allowing to happen to your soul? Like, what are you doing? Are you actually pulling them up or are they pulling you down? What's actually going on here? So pay close attention to that dynamic. Um, and then number three, another thing that the other side is really big on is personal power. You know how when they call you an enabler, like if somebody's having problems, they'll call the loved ones around them an enabler? A lot of times that has to do with the fact that they are weakening the person. They are casting this victim, poor me mentality onto them to where the person is like, oh, you know, they really are robbed of their personal power because everyone's making them feel like a victim and just, you know, feeling sorry for them so much and trying to help them so much that you become their enabler where you weaken them where the other side is challenging you to place the plate in front of them and ask them to step up to it, as opposed to you doing all the work for them. You know, I've seen situations where, geez, you know, if the person could, they would literally jump into the other person's body and live their life for them. <laughs> you can't do that. So you are actually better off building the person up so that they themselves can help themselves via their free will decisions, via self-discipline. So they actually ask you to help empower them as individuals, as opposed to doing everything for them, which enables them, robs them of personal power and weakens them. So they're saying, you know, if you rob them of your personal, of their personal power, you're actually not really doing them any favors, right? Um, and the reason the other side doesn't feel like you're doing them any favors is because the other side is really big on accountability. What? are you doing what are you not doing you create your own reality and they're so big on our souls being magnets thoughts are energy emotions are energy so 
Maybe we're in a bad mood all the time because we're emotionally responding to our own thought process. You change your thought process, you change your emotions. There are certain situations where I choose how I emotionally respond to them and I sit there and I catch myself and I'm like, I have a choice here. I can emotionally respond to this situation this way or this way. So we have choices and we command universal energies via our free will decisions. So because of that free will, the other side holds us as individuals accountable for our behavior, our actions, our mindsets. So a lot of times the other side will come forward and say, save yourself. We're holding you accountable. We're empowering you. We're saying you have the power to save yourself. The divine's going to help you and we're going to help you once you align yourself with truth. Forces of nature will rise up to support you in that truth. But we're going to hold you accountable. We don't want anyone else doing the work for you because if somebody else does the work for you, they weaken you. They weaken your soul. You're not learning any lessons. You're not growing and evolving as a soul because you're not being challenged. Life is filled with challenge. It's hard. We're all a bunch of superheroes who are constantly battling the forces of evil, right? We're all superheroes battling dark. Devil on one shoulder, the angel on the other one. In between is our head, which is our free will. Which way are we tilting that day, right? We have a choice. We have a choice. We have a choice to overcome fear and sadness, depression, inertia, whatever. So that's why when your partner's doing all the work for you, the other side gets a little annoyed. Along the same lines as accountability, are you ingesting toxins? Guess what? The other side holds you accountable for that too. They hold you accountable for this. You are choosing to ingest those toxins every day. If you're, if you're addicted, you have the power to break that addiction. You just need the self-discipline to actually follow through and get past that stupid physical addiction, mental, emotional, physical addiction, whatever. So if you're ingesting toxins, the other side's gonna approach you and say, what are you taking those toxins for, sweet cheeks? What circumstances are you trying to escape? Those toxins are escapism. What about life are you trying to escape? Address that aspect of your life. I got news for you. I know people who became alcoholics after they started dating somebody. They were fine before they started dating them. <laughs> Dude, it's like, break up with the person. Stop drinking alcohol. You won't need the escapism anymore to numb you and your heart and your feelings within that relationship. Um, so that's the thing is, um, you know, they will still hold you accountable. And, you know, the people who I know have overcome addictions, they kick their own butt. They kick their own butt. It's like, okay, maybe they went to a rehab center for help, but you know who did at the end of the day? They did. They kicked their own butt and they overcame the addiction. More power to them. Other side's going like this, right? So they're also gonna hold you accountable for toxins. So if you are rescuing someone who's addicted to toxins, it is more than fair to say, it is your decision to ingest these toxins every day. And it is your decision to continue to take these toxins every day. But either way, it is my free will decision of whether or not I stay with you. No rescuing. This isn't, this isn't an excuse, guys. This isn't an excuse. Having a partner who's ingesting toxins? Nope. Not an excuse. The other side is like, we're sorry you decided to ingest these toxins. Let's talk about why you're doing it. Okay. Um, what's the next point? Uh, this is another thing where the other side is challenging the rescuer. Do you need to feel needed? I have news for you. You have a repeated pattern of rescuing people. Guess what your repeated pattern involves? Your partner being dependent on you in some way. Your partner, the injured bird, needing you in some way. What does this result in? Puffed up ego right? I'm needed. I'm strong. They need me, right? Puffed up ego in some way. And number two, security. You have security within that relationship because you're needed. My partner is not going to leave me. They need me, right? So are you rescuing this person because you know you will feel secure? Another thing to ask yourself, we accept the love we think we deserve. So that's another thing is are you worthy of that tennis game? Are you worthy of that equal partner who you do have something to bounce off of every day? Who challenges you? Who motivates you to grow and evolve as a soul and to constantly better yourself within the relationship? Are you deserving of that? It is what the other side's going to ask you. 
do you feel that way about yourself? Um, and then another thing is that they're saying that, uh, it's like they want your partner to choose you as opposed to need you. They're saying that your partner coming from a place of strength and consciously choosing to be with you is more profound, special, and meaningful than a partner that needs you. So if somebody looks at you and says, you know, oh, I need you so much, it's like, okay, well, that's sweet, but... I would almost rather prefer having a partner who doesn't need me but chooses me. Like, I don't need you in my life, but I want you in my life. It, they're, they're, the, the other side is saying that's what they want for you guys. They want your partner to choose you. Like, like they, they want the choice to be there as opposed to the necessity. Um, and then another, another thing that they're saying is that they're worried about your partner actually emotionally manipulating you and taking advantage of you. And this goes back to their concern about your compassion. Is, is your partner playing up the victimhood? Is your partner playing up their own weakness to elicit more compassion from you and to elicit more understanding from you on purpose? So that's another thing the other side is going to, ask you to pay close attention to is is your partner taking advantage of that um do they have you wrapped around their finger are they sitting there thinking i got this person wrapped you know i can get away with anything and they just like psychoanalyze it away <laughs> right it's like oh well you know they're like depressed so you know they didn't mean to rip me a new one or whatever you know the other side is almost going to ask you you know how understanding are you being because they might be taking advantage of the situation and emotionally manipulating you on purpose. Um, another thing they're saying is that the best way to, um, okay, this, this is along the same lines as personal power, is they actually want you to empower your partner as opposed to rescue them. They want you to boost them up and come from a place of personal power. So. How can you do this? You know, ideally, I guess the kind of relationship they're showing me for this type of situation is you reaching out to your partner with love and compassion and saying, let's go to the gym together and work out. Let's, you know, go watch a movie together. Let's go watch a comedy together and laugh and to raise our energetic state together. Let's go laugh and be silly. Let's go play in a park somewhere with our doggy or whatever. Um, let's cook a healthy meal together. Let's go see the world together. Let's travel and explore new lands to where you hold your partner's hand and you do all these things that are healthy, healthy activities. Um, you know, just, just the act of playing games together, just even board games and challenging each other that way with the healthy competition, uh, racing each other across the pool, playing that tennis match and being antagonistic towards each other just to be silly. That kind of encourages, you know, your partner to, you know, sit next to you and to have that type of relationship dynamic that's healthy and acknowledging the mind body spirit connection to where you're really fostering that, you know, the the, the soul and the heart and the mind and the physical body just marrying that all together. And that's that's what they want. That, that, that's that's what the other side is saying they want. They don't want that rescuing, like, oh, poor you, you know. Because what ends up happening, instead of you empowering them, they end up weakening you because they become an energetic vampire. They literally end up sucking the life out of you. So the opposite happens. Instead of you rescuing them and pulling them up, they pull you down. And that is the dynamic the other side's worried about. They end up pulling you down and sucking the life out of you and becoming an energetic vampire. So they want you to pay close attention to that and be conscious and aware of that because what are you allowing to happen to your soul? Are you showing self-love? Are you being self-protective? What are you allowing to happen to your soul? They hold you accountable for rescuing too. 
you're being held accountable. So what type of relationship dynamic do you want? Um, and so this is where the other side is saying that they want you to make relationship choices based in self-love as opposed to rescuing people they want you to rescue yourself and choose partners who are healthy for you now here's the deal i'm not asking you to just throw people's souls out in the trash can like well forget it you know forget it and just giving up on you you're a loser and just like throw their soul in the trash <laughs> i'm not saying that either because we all consist of light and dark, right? All of us. None of us are just pure, innocent, little, you know, angels or whatever, right? But you also have to hold them accountable for their free will decisions. So that's where they're asking you to make decisions based in self-love because decisions based in self-love are always supported by universal energies. So when you make decisions based in self-love, you actually end up attracting more love to yourself from the universe. So it's actually pretty cool the way that works via the law of attraction. But um, like I said, we accept the love that we, we think we deserve. So um, they want you to, to date people who are able to give you the love that you need and you deserve because you have needs too. You have needs too, the rescuer, right? Your needs need to be met also. So if they're sucking the life out of you, are you really getting what you need out of this relationship either? So maybe both of you guys are just going down together and the ship is sinking. So, but again, j just to the point that I was trying to make earlier is I'm not saying that you have to like write everybody off. Just be like, oh, forget it. Um, but like, I mean, give these people a chance to like learn and grow and evolve and, and basically like pick themselves up. It's okay to be in a romantic relationship with this person that falls down. Um, I mean, that's what a partnership's all about, right? One person's feeling weak, the other person's feeling strong, you help that person up. One person's feeling weak, the other person's feeling strong, you help that person up. It's kind of like a dynamic that can go back and forth, right? But when it's so severe and it's perpetual, right, that's when you kind of have to ask the person, like, okay, you know, what are you doing to take care of yourself? And again, it's huge accountability it's huge what are you doing to help yourself right um but again there's nothing wrong with being your partner's life coach at all and helping them helping them be the best person they themselves can be and then in turn hopefully they're helping you be the best person you can be and then you both end up taking off like rockets right you guys both end up lifting each other up that's what it's all about right unconditional love for one another that's healthy that involves the mind body spirit connection right that meditation that eating healthy diet water exercise you know maybe like reading together traveling together whatever nourishes your soul on, on a deeper level you do that together and that brings you closer together as a couple right um so i thought this was a pretty important topic to share because it was something that I noticed was coming up in readings and I'm like, you know what, I got to channel a video about this because this is really important for people to know. And again, it's just my job to point this stuff out, just to shine a flashlight on, you know, certain subjects and just say, have you considered this? Have you considered this? Have you considered this? Because again, if you accept, you know, the love you think you deserve, that self-esteem, that image, that self-worth that comes from deep within, knowing that you are worthy of that wonderful, amazing, unconditional love is the most important thing you can have. And in the meantime, take care and be well. Thank you.